Hi. There are no obviously good ideas in strategy. The very same strategy that you saw somebody else employ, to great effect, could be completely the wrong idea for you. And the same strategy that you have employed previously might just be the wrong strategy as well. How you set your target market, your channel, your product, your pricing, your competitive strategy, that is everything, depends on the answer to one simple question. Get that right and strategies a walk in the park. Get it wrong and you're dead. So what's that one thing that you need to know? Well, I actually don't care whether you're a startup or a gorilla in your market. What we do care about is how obvious the decision to buy at all is to your target market. Let me explain. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set your strategy around your market, not your product. We've all seen a maturity model like this in various forms. Laggards and early adopters, they're terms that even our kids use. We understand these terms, we know what they mean. So where are you and where are your competitors on this model? Well, that turns out to be completely the wrong question. I don't care where you are. The question is, where is your buyer? Let me explain. Imagine an early adopter. No one else has bought before, so they have no proof. What is it that they're looking for, this courageous early adopter? Well, they're willing to make a bet to be the first to come on board to a new product if they can get some advantage. So, should you be selling to this vertical or to this vertical market? And the answer is neither of those. There isn't yet a vertical market. There's a propensity, a willingness, a capacity to be the first in the market and you should be selling really broadly. Kind of anybody who looks like an early adopter who might gain some early advantage. And you'll learn from it. Should you be selling a complete solution? Fairly early adopters probably want to bend the solution a little bit. They, an incomplete solution with a lot of service wrapped around it will provide a lot of flexibility. And pricing? Well, they don't know what your product costs yet, and you may not either. They don't know your costs. What they do know is what's the commercial benefit of embracing this, less some factor for risk. And that's called value pricing. Your pricing strategy needs to be value priced. When selling to an early adopter market, where you think most of the market is really just made up of these early risk takers, what should your strategy be? Well, you want to be selling directly because they want to buy from you directly. You're the innovator. They want to deal with you directly and you probably want to deal with them because you'll learn a lot. Sell broadly because you don't know where the target market is yet and also sell a slightly, in fact, even a deliberately incomplete product which you can make complete with some flexible services. Your value pricing, and that's the strategy that's going to win for the early market. This is the right strategy for the early market, and it's completely the wrong strategy for the next group of buyers. And this is where Jeffrey Moore's chasm theory comes in. It kind of works like this. The next group of buyers are those who are not willing to be the first on board. They're not laggards by any stretch of the imagination. They're just not the early risk takers. What is it that, they're, that they were waiting for, that they didn't have, that prevented them from buying? Confidence. They needed some kind of proof. This next group of buyers, the pragmatists, need a little bit of proof before they're willing to adopt. So what should your strategy be? Give them the proof they want. What's the best way to give them the proof? Well, firstly, your target's a small market. Where before you were going broad, now you're going narrow because that small market you can then dominate. That small market will look around and say, gee, it seems like everybody just like me is buying from you. Maybe it's okay to do it. That's the first thing we want to do. We probably want to make a complete solution now for the small market because these are not the risk takers. Once we've dominated that first target market, we're really strong and we're clearly the gorilla, we can then use that success to sell to another market, maybe another couple of markets. 
Use your strength in one market to sell into two more markets, and use your strength in those two more markets to sell into four more markets. And so it goes, leveraging your strength as you go. And that's what Jeffrey Moore calls the bowling alley. Because you're using the early momentum from your early market wins to win your later markets. You're successfully entering and winning the right to serve each of these markets all the way through. At some point, we've got multiple niches that have become ours. The buyers now in other markets that you haven't yet targeted know that it's safe to buy. And that's the tornado. The tornado is the fastest growth period of any market. The buyers in that market say, look, it's not a question of whether I buy, it's a question of whether I buy from you or from somebody else. That's when our strategy has to change. Again, there's no point targeting a niche because everybody's gonna buy. There's no point selling directly because the buyer wants to buy from, well, whomever they want to buy from. And you just don't have enough arms or legs to sell to the whole market. So now we need an extended channel and market pricing. Whereas before we've been preserving profits, now we're probably gonna drive pricing down to drive our competitors out of the market. Very different strategies at each point as our markets mature. And then the market does mature, when it kind of maxes out at the top of the curve. The market is at its biggest point and it's just not growing anymore. The buyers know what they need and they'll start to dictate terms to you. What should your strategy be? Well, kind of accommodate whatever they need. They probably don't want you to bundle a product anymore. They want to buy it from you in a piecemeal fashion. I know what that does. I know what that bit does. I want a bit from you and I want a bit from somebody else. So the strategy now becomes really reflecting what the buyers are ready for. Frankly, it's been that all the way through. It's just been different stages of readiness. The buyer is ready for something different at every stage. So must our strategy be different at every stage? When the person who enters your business and says, we should, insert your favorite strategy comment here, stop and reflect. Where's my market? In a moment or two, I'll show you how we do that in Funnel Plan, but before I do, let me draw the conclusions. That is, what should we do based on this learning from Jeffrey Moore? You wanna get your team together, get the leadership team, get sales, get marketing, get operations, finance, and CEO, all get together. Then work out for each of the product categories that you compete in, where you think your target market is in terms of maturity. In fact, slice it even more granularly than that. List every product category and for each of the target markets that you have for that category, determine how mature are they and work out where the majority of the market is right now. Build your strategy around what the buyers for that stage of the maturity are ready for. Should you be selling direct, indirect, value pricing, market pricing, etc. Set the strategy and then do one additional thing build a plan for the next stage in the maturity. Why? Because as soon as you start to see signs that your market's maturing and they're ready for the next stage, you need to be ready to execute on that next stage. Okay, here's how we do this in Funnel Plan. Now you probably know we've already chosen the target market. Well, the target market is the type of organization or types of organization and the roles within those organizations most impacted by the problem you've chosen. For each of those target markets, or if you like, segments, we're going to identify how mature each of those segments are in terms of the problem. Are they really early in their understanding of it, or are they really mature in their understanding of it? You're gonna choose between early market, bowling alley, that's where the pragmatists start to come on board, the tornado, that's the fast growth period of the market, Main Street, where the market's big, but it's no longer growing, or end of life, when it's in decline. Identify where each of your target markets are in the funnel plan. Now you see this other stuff on the right over here? I'm gonna explain that on another day. That helps us work out how much of our effort we should be applying to branding versus demand for each of those target segments. Now that we understand how mature they are, 
but I'll save that for another day. Don't have a funnel plan? Get a free one at funnelplan.com. Go get a free one now or click on the little eye on your screen. Just visit funnelplan.com. Either way, I've got lots more lined up for next week. Until then, may your funnel be full and always flowing. Our thanks this week to you for watching this week's show. Jeffrey Moore for Chasm Theory in a couple of his books. Lisbeth Pena for blog production. John Ang for video production. My name's Hugh McFarlane and it's been my absolute pleasure to have scripted and presented this week's show.